This is Kevin Johnson. He's going to give us a demonstration on how to fold a parachute, a large parachute for our competition use. This is a 36 inch parachute. We're here in Muskegon, Michigan and we're in a rain delay. So this is what you do during rain delays. You, you learn from other competitors on how to do things. So this is kind of a, a, a modification of the Russian folding technique. The Russians have put out this big PDF with a thousand steps of how to fold parachutes and it works really well if you have to do it the night before. But if you're out at the field and you need to fold or, or you just want something that's a little bit easier to deal with but still has good results, um, I came up with this sort of idea. So you start out with the parachute folded in half on a, on a nice flat table and you just want to make sure your shroud lines are sort of separated into their little individual bundles. And then you just start by folding one over and coming over the entire thing and line up. And again, you just make sure your shroud lines come down in their bundles together. If you keep them separated out, that way they're not tangled up amongst each other. And you just continue doing that. Again, folding in half. And you end up with two bundles. And if you fold in half again, we'll have one bundle with a flap. So I'm going to turn this over to make it easier to see what's going on with the flap. So again, you just want to keep everything nice and together in a bundle. I'll fold up the lines and then kind of let them loop. They're going to loop the way they want to loop because it came off a spool. And you end up with your attachment point down hanging out at the end. And then you just fold over your flap to cover the shroud lines that are inside. Do a little tucking. Nice and smooth. And I actually have enough here that I can fold back the other way. Again, trying to protect the shroud lines inside of the, the shoe packet. Okay. And what I'll do is I'll fold one time so it's up towards the top. And so now what you'll do is you'll get your body together and you'll insert it into the body. You'll attach your chute to whatever shock cord you have and wrap that shock cord up and put it right here in the side of the chute and then you can slide it down into the body. And I actually have one here that I can show you. So you just have the chute kind of sticking out. And it's really important when you do that you find where your point is on that parachute and everything goes on the opposite side of that point. That way you avoid catching the point in your loops. So I just use, wrap it around my fingers, get it on the other side, and it can slide down with the parachute. As long as it's down underneath where all the top of your shroud lines are, you don't have a chance to catch those. And then any extra can go right up into the nose cone shoulder. Okay. And one of the things I like about that is when it opens up and everything opens up, if you've got all your shock cord over on this side, when it comes out, you get that action with the parachute opening that way and all your shock cord is over here. And you'll see how easy the stuff falls out of that and then it would open up and inflate. But it's all about making sure you're not tangling anything, making sure that you're not looping around, your um, your parachute or your shroud lines, and you can do this the night before. Um, you know, if you want to do it where you have a little bit of controlled stuff in the 
Yeah, that's right. Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, but the idea is when it's when it's folded up, because all your shock cords are over here, you're, you're not looping around the bottom. You're not catching the point because that'll loop around and catch. You don't have it on top of all your shroud lines, and there's nothing to tie or make a knot when it comes out of the tube. But that's it. That's how I made the final round for or the fly up round last year, last cycle. Well, thank you. When you're doing your shroud lines, always do your loops so that they're overlapping each other, descending like you would want to do a uh, line on a boat when you're doing when you're coiling up uh, um, cord on a uh, not cord but um, rope on a boat. You do it so as you pull it, it won't grab the loop that's above it. Right. So you just make sure that like overlap halfway. That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. And like I said, I haven't run into that, but Dave's been doing this a lot longer than I have. So it's all the same sort of stuff once you get that yep. in there. Yep. And your just shroud lines are below the pole. Right. It's a little tighter for the shroud lines, but what you're doing is great. I mean, it, that, is, that works great. Yeah. The other thing is. Um, the, if it's a brand new shoot, it actually helps to put up your hand some because if it's totally, totally flat and, and beautifully uh, smooth, when you fold it, the, it can actually kind of lock itself together a little bit. If it's, if it's got some crinkles and there's air in there, it will want to open up. And then you can also, if you really want to get advanced, when you fold this, uh -huh, you can crimp it in. That's it. That's exactly the way we fold it. So what it does is it makes a spring in the material. That's, that's exactly the way I'm going. And that is your test. Put it on a table. If it opens on its own, you got a good fold, folding technique. If it just stays there so, folded in half, you need to play with your folding technique. So instead of just folding it flat, you pinch it and then fold it. And it still goes into the, the tube the same way, and it just gives you a little bit of extra oomph to open the, open the spike. Yep. So my name is Tim Van Milligan. You're watching the Apogee Rocketry Workshop. Over here off to the side, we have some other videos that I think you're going to enjoy. Please subscribe to our channel just down there on YouTube. Um, and also, please leave us a comment. We love to hear what you're, you have to say about us. And, and if you have any questions, you can ask them down there and we'll try to answer them. May the winds be light, may the skies be blue, and may all your rockets fly straight and true.